Hello and welcome back to Brock's Viscarize. Today we're going to be looking at and learning a little bit about sword tails. What we're seeing in the tank right now is a set of red sword tails and the tank has been planted with pothos, the house plant. After the house plant grows a little larger and has more roots on it, it'll be removed and placed in soil. The sword tails, of course, will remain in the water. Sword tails are freshwater fish native to Mexico and northern Central America. They are related to platys and mollies. Platys, mollies, and sword tails give birth to baby fish and do not lay eggs. They are called sword tails because on the male fish, the tail fin is shaped sort of like a sword. They can grow to be 3.5 to 16 centimeters. That's also 1.4 to 6.3 inches, depending on the species and environment that they are in. Generally speaking, their range is from the southern Rio Grande River Basin in Mexico through eastern rivers, streams, lakes, and ponds down towards the Gulf of Mexico. They also appear in northern Guatemala, Belize, and northern Honduras. This is a very large area how they came to be distributed in such a way is a scientific mystery that deserves study. How do you think that happened? There are many forests, mountains, hills, and open land between the areas of water where the sword tails live in the wild. Sword tails do very well in community aquariums. A community aquarium is an aquarium with different types of fish in it. Swordtails get along with other kinds of tropical fish that are also community fish. Swordtails are relatively easy to care for, have a peaceful demeanor, and an amazing diversity in colors and fin shapes. Many people keep red wag sword tails, which have a black caudal fin, red velvet sword tails, which are very red, marigolds, which are yellow, black Nubians, which are deeply colored black, and other types are known as pineapple and neon. Sword tails can live in 10 gallon tanks, but do better starting in 20 gallon tanks, especially if there are a few of them. This gives them space to move around, display, and even have babies. The places where they live have lots of aquatic plants in them, so they like plants in their aquariums too. You'll see them moving around through the plants, hunting for food, seeking protection, and just enjoying themselves with the plants. If you have more than one sword tail, one more than one male sword tail, they can chase one another around or even get into a fight. That's also why it is best to keep the sword tails in a little larger tank and to have plenty of plants for them to hide and swim around in. Sword tails can start having babies when they're only three months old. Sword tails are omnivores and that means they will eat a wide variety of food. They survive and do well on fish food you can buy at the pet shop or a market. They also like to eat algae, freeze-dried bloodworms, tube effects, and brine shrimp. Red sword tails are a lot of fun to keep, look at, and study. Thanks for joining us.